Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. This is episode number 283, The Physical Signs of Thyroid Deficiency, in particular, hypothyroidism. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Today we're continuing a conversation, a series of conversations that we have begun about the importance of information regarding hormone deficiencies. And in our last podcast, we talked about human growth hormone and when you develop those deficiencies, what that looks like and what that does. This week, we're going to talk about the thyroid hormone. And when you have a thyroid deficiency, how would you recognize it? Why does it matter? What should you do? That's right. So that's <coughs> the thyroid deficiency is one of the things that I can see across the room. And unfortunately... You mean if somebody has a goiter? Yeah. Yeah. So, so if you have a, a, a goiter, your thyroid sits right here above these bones. And if you have a thickness right here, it's most likely your thyroid gland that's pushing your skin out. It kind of looks like you've got <clears throat> like a muffler on, but, or it can actually look round and stick way out if it's severe. But a goiter is the thyroid gland struggling to make enough thyroid, or it could be alternatively, if that's all you see, it could be a hyperactive thyroid gland that is, that's a whole different subject. That's high thyroid. We're talking about low thyroid. I've seen goiters as small as a golf ball and as large as a softball. I mean, they just swell up. Yeah. And, and really, before it gets there, you should be seeing a doctor and having well, something done about it. But, but I can see it when it starts and it's subtle. And I usually look at most of my patients and make them like pull their turtleneck down or something so I can see that. Mm -hmm. But also I look at other things when I go out to the waiting room and I shake their hand. If their hand's freezing cold, the thyroid runs your furnace inside your body. So the thyroid makes you warm or cold. And I say, are you always cold? I'm always cold. No matter if they're thin thin or fat or normal They're always cold Mm -hmm. when they have hypothyroidism. And then I look at their face, and oftentimes I have to look past the makeup. But oftentimes people who have thyroid have half an eyebrow, Mm -hmm. the inner half. The the, the arc from the inside of the eye to the midpoint? Yeah. Still has an eyebrow? Still has an eyebrow, and then there's nothing out there? Yeah. So when I see that, there is nothing else that's very specific. There's nothing else that will make that happen unless you just burned your eyebrow off or you had or some kind of trauma. Yeah. But but there's nothing else besides low thyroid that's going to give you half a thyroid half an eyebrow. And then when you get your thyroid back, when you replace it uh, and get it to normal, that grows back. It's amazing. So uh, usually thyroid does not affect your eyelashes, but it does affect your hair in that um, I have light walls Uh, in my office. Mm -hmm. So I can see these little pieces of hair that are all kind of broken off and sticking out, kind of frizzy. Like split ends, frizzy. Right. And that's, and somebody who has that plus overall thinning hair, or they say that hair comes out in bunches, not just for a week, but like for months and months on end, and their hair's gotten thinner and won't grow because it breaks off. That's another sign that's very specific to hypothyroidism. It doesn't come out in patches. It comes out all over. Okay. There's no, not in the front, not on the sides, everywhere is where low thyroid causes your hair to um, thin and break off. But then we look at the fingernails and they're not, it's not about ridges this time like it was with growth hormone. It's about broken fingernails that just, that just, that they brittle and, they just... brittle and they, they kind of uh, peel off. Now, I have to say that many women have fake nails if this happens, so right. I can't just look at them. Right. Many women have their eyes tattooed to take, you know, so, so that they can... So it's not from doing drudgery and housework? No. No, it's not that kind of... It's not that kind of That kind abuse. of brittle. But, uh-huh. I mean, obviously that could do something to your sure. nails as well. However, in this circumstance, if you see 
the, the broken hair, the thin hair, the lack of eyebrows, and there's some other things that are really interesting. Usually people who have uh, hypothyroidism are swollen. Like their ring, I look at like their rings, puffy. really puffy. Their rings, you know, basically are, are swollen to their hands. Like a fluid buildup under the skin. Right. Okay. Because without thyroid, you can't get this. You can't get the fluid back into the bloodstream, so you can pee it out. So you just retain all this fluid. So their faces look kind of swollen here. They usually have gained a lot of weight, and they can't get it off. They're tired, fatigued, and they look fatigued. They look just kind of, you know, they have the they have kind of circles under their eyes, not bags necessarily, but circles. Or they can have swelling all around their eyes. But this sort of thing starts to occur when? In age? I mean, well, because how would a woman know, you know, I'm not just retaining water, it's about that time? Well, if it comes and goes every month, then, then, you know, then right. that has to permanent. do with that has to do with the cycle. But but we ha we see a bump in low thyroid at the time where women are developing breasts. Okay. So 12 to 16, and we see another bump in women who are post-pregnancy, okay, so that, so we, sometimes we come out of a pregnancy and no thyroid, and we feel terrible, and that can be part of postpartum depression, but that's not the source generally, and then we see another um, large group, another blip in the uh, incidence of this mm -hmm. at Right pre-menopause, between when okay. testosterone's gone and at our 40s and 50 when we're menopausal. So right in that area, right. we see a lot of people get hypothyroidism. Okay. So this is, it's very difficult without lab work to tell, except for the eyebrow thing, whether they're describing low testosterone, low thyroid, uh, hypoactive cortisol. I mean, there's many different hormones that can be, be causing most of these symptoms, mm -hmm. except for the eyebrows and except for the pattern of hair loss. So when I go through all my symptoms, I'm really specifically looking for certain things that tell me about their thyroid, but I also look at their lab. If they have all of those signs and their lab's normal, well, I know that I still treat them. When <laughs> Years ago, when we first began to work together, know one another, you met my wife, and one of the first things that you said after a conversation with her, and it's social conversation, but Kathy's always on, so uh, <laughs> you said, I want to check out your thyroid because the way you look and the things that you're telling me, I think there's a problem. And her regular physician had not ever suggested that as a concern. Yeah, well, and then you did blood an tests to, to uh, validate your mm -hmm. assumptions. And you were dead on. And so she needed uh, a thyroid medication, which is a really simple way to treat simple this problem. And usually pretty inexpensive. And very inexpensive. Yeah, comparatively. So this is comparatively to three or four other drugs that we're going to have to be used to antidepression and a bunch of other things that are expensive. Yeah. The other thing we see on lab, which isn't something you would see like looking at somebody, but high cholesterol is a very common uh, problem. When the thyroid's When the balance? thyroid's low. Okay. So usually when we treat thyroid, we could if you're on a, a statins, you get your you get your thyroid you get your thyroid your your cholesterol goes down and you don't really need the statins mm -hmm. often. So mm -hmm. it's not it doesn't fix triglycerides but it fixes the cholesterol. So that's something that I see, but I've got all this information, so I have an advantage. Right. I'm looking at my patient, I'm looking at their lab, and I have their history of symptoms. So I've got it all together right in front of me, so I can make. Uh, a quicker assessment. But if you're living with someone, they're fatigued, they can't get out of bed, they're swollen, they're, oh, and constipated. They have no eyebrows, their hair's breaking off, their nails are breaking off, they are so swollen they can't get rings on and off. Um, they usually are distended because they're filled with poop, they're constipated, and they can't lose weight, their hands are cold and they're freezing all the time. They need their thyroid checked. And it, even if their thyroid comes back normal, because the test is not perfect. In fact, it's very imperfect. I would still try them on thyroid and see if it wipes out all the symptoms. So this is one of those situations in where the blood tests alone can't be the determinant. I mean, you have to use your medical judgment. Right. And, and oftentimes you, you get in a situation where you say, well, you know what, let's try this for a month and see if you feel any different. Mm -hmm. Because if you do, then it's helping you. And if, if you those don't, symptoms then went we away. don't need to, yeah. So it's not just about getting more energy. It's about 
wiping out the symptoms you came to me with. Right. And and in a way, you know, if you have a goiter for from low thyroid sure. with all of these other low thyroid symptoms, it helps the goiter go away. Because your your thyroid is struggling. That's why it's big. It's struggling to make this thyroid that's keeping you alive. Without thyroid, we go into a coma if we have no thyroid. So so it's getting big trying to work. And then when you give it you give the patient thyroid, it goes quiet and it calms down. But, what are you laughing about? Uh, well I'm laughing because I, I'm trying to say whether I want to share this story. Uh, <laughs> As I began to work with Dr. Maupin, she also identified because my eyebrows were falling off half off my head. And, and they're back. And uh, she wanted to test me for mm-hmm. thyroid and put me on a thyroid medicine. And she did, and it's helped, and those symptoms are gone. And I've been on this thyroid medicine for several years with no side effects, no issues. And then about a year ago, she received a letter from my insurance company. <laughs> and how she got this, they got this information, I don't know. We've talked about this on other podcasts. Because you didn't turn it into I didn't turn it into my insurance. And I just paid for it because it's very inexpensive medicine. And they said, we want to know why you're giving this man a thyroid medicine because it is not the standard of care for elderly gentlemen. <laughs> really ticked me off. I was off. offended. You were offended. Yeah, so. we were both offended. Uh, and we both wrote letters and said, who in the hell do you think you are? Why are you, know, you butting into my business. treatment plan? Because yeah. you're not paying for me. They're not paying and they're for not me. And they're not doctors. And they're not doctors. Yeah. And they're not paying for your drugs. So, no. so whose business so that's, is it? But that was a, that's a different story from a different day. But yeah, that's but, why I was laughing. I was okay. thinking about that. Every day I get uh, people coming in saying, my doctor says I shouldn't be on my thyroid medicine. Yeah. And I said, I say, Go off of it. Are See you, what happens. Are you better? Yeah. Did all these symptoms that are low thyroid okay. symptoms go away? And they say, yeah. I said, well, clearly then you needed it and you need to stay on it and let me manage it, please. Because then they'll, there's a passive aggressive competitive side to being a physician. And so the other doctor gets offended. And then they say, well, you're on too much. And they drop the dose so low right. that it doesn't work. So that's not acceptable either. I mean, but that's a game that pe- that sure. physicians tend to play. And so if you're being managed by somebody who understands that thyroid shouldn't be just the lowest level that anybody's ever taken because that doesn't work. It turns that turns your own thyroid off and Which doesn't makes it exacerbates it makes yeah, it worse. Yeah, it makes it worse and then doesn't give you back enough to actually function. Yeah. It's kind of like taking a little bit, bit of testosterone. A little bit of testosterone shuts down your FSH and LH to your testicles, and then you aren't getting enough from a little bit, and you're not making any. There's no, it's it's a it's basically you're on it or you're off it, and it has to take over for the for the body. And, and that's so frustrating because it's such a judgment call at least in the beginning, mm-hmm. and until you see whether or not the symptoms are alleviated. Mm-hmm. And so it's not dangerous. there are many physicians who are not willing to take a look at that mm-hmm. and because it, there, it's not in the book. It's, it's not in the not book, in the but the test isn't right Yeah, most of the or often. Right. Or that but, the norms are not right, especially for women. But we're dealing with obesity often. Right. And obesity can be secondary to a low thyroid. And obesity is so common and high cholesterol is so common, we should be checking the thyroid because that causes obesity and it causes high, high cholesterol. Before we start putting people on other types of drugs, we should start with this. And maybe they need something else. But this, this would solve a lot of those problems in a very inexpensive and very physiologically normal way. I'm just giving back a hormone that they're missing. I'm not right. giving them a bunch of other things. Right. And so that's an, very an, natural. An amount that for that individual alleviates their symptoms, not a standard uh, computerized determined amount. That's true. Cause, and we adjust it after we, you know, right. we give you the thyroid, then we adjust it. I either adjust it by your body temperature, depending on if your lab tests were normal to begin with and you have symptoms and I need to figure out your dose, I can't use the lab. So I have you take basal body temperatures, which are temperatures first thing in the morning before you get out of bed, or oral temperatures, and it should Some be... Some of you have experience with that with trying to get pregnant. Right. Yeah, I did that for that years. magic window. Yeah, but that's, <laughs> that's not what this is for. Yeah. This is to see if your dose of thyroid is normal. So 
you check it before you take your thyroid, you take your, you take your temperature, and if it's under 97.9 as a female, 98 of, as a male, then your thyroid's low, okay? So then we can up it by a small amount. Right. So we do that on a weekly basis till we come up with the right dose. Right. And generally, if you're following the temperature, you're not going to get too much. So that's a, a good way to look at it. Also, I don't know if we always talk about high blood pressure. I don't know if you've heard this, but low blood pressure plus a low pulse, which are rarely seen together, are a sign of hypothyroidism. Or Is that why thyroid. they report being cold all the time? Because they have low blood pressure? They're cold because their cells aren't making energy. Without thyroid, they're so not just burning. The itself they're is not, not burning on. calories. It's like um, having a furnace and having all of the coal stacked outside. Oh, my furnace has been winterized. Yeah, well, different yeah. kind, different. I mean, I'm talking about like my grandparents, but whatever wood is just yeah. stacked up. Sure. And then the furnace has nothing to burn, so you're not Nobody's warm. putting it in it. Yeah. So your cells aren't, aren't burning calories to make right. energy and heat. It's just all of that is going, all of that sugar, blood sugar is going around and making, and making fat. Mm. So that's, that's the Trying to keep problem. You warm. Yeah. Well, it's making fat because it has nowhere to go with your blood sugar. Yeah. So it just insulates you. In, in the end, you're insulated, but you're still cold. Yeah. So that doesn't help. Right. So that's why I try to replace it. I mean, I think this is pretty basic. In the old, I'm old enough to know that in the days before lab being lab was easy to get. It took weeks to get lab back, and I mean, that, in the dark ages in the 70s, um, we would see somebody had high cholesterol, and we would give them thyroid if they looked like just by the signs. Mm -hmm. We'd give them thyroid. And then if they felt better and they lost weight and their cholesterol came down, that was our diagnosis. We didn't use the lab very much. So as you're watching or listening to this video, there will be some inserts of photographs from a book. You want mm -hmm. to tell them about the book? This is a book by Theory Hertog, and you can get this on Amazon. Um, it is a book for doctors. There are some pictures in here you don't want your kids to pick up. It just would... They're just medical pictures. They're medical pictures, and it would... might. You know, kind of lead to conversations you may not want to have yet. <laughs> yet, yeah. So, but it's a very educational book about what the physical symptoms and signs are just by looking at someone for every hormone deficiency and some for hormone hyper overproduction. But he has pictures. He and his dad are were both endocrinologists, so it's a two generation project, and he's brilliant. This is where I learned. What I've been doing automatically, this is where I learned how Perfect. to put it all together. Codified it. Yes. And and in one thought, I could look at somebody and say, they're, they're low on this. He has, at conferences, he'll bring up uh, one of the doctors and he'll tell them what hormones are missing by looking at them. Yes. So it's... So, so, so it's, we're going to post some of these that you can see, so you see what we're talking about in terms of symptomology. But we'll also post a chart that'll be a PDF link. And you can stop the podcast and click on the link, and it'll bring the chart up. And then you can look at some of the, the things Sign, that, the that we're talking about. The different physical signs. And we want you to have hormone. this not because we want you to practice medicine or we want you to become uh, involved in all kinds of self or other diagnoses. That or you're arguments with your doctor. For. Just find a doctor who will take care of hormones. But we do want you to know enough to say, uh, like, elbow keratosis. If you yeah. have that, what is, if you have it, hey, what is it? Elbow keratosis is the buildup of, um, it looks like callus uh -huh. on your elbows. And that's a sign that your your skin's not turning over fast enough. And that's one of the one of the signs of low thyroid. So if you have that and you show it to your doctor. Crusty and, elbows. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not particularly responsive, or, or you just want to go in and say, I I'm noticing this. Does that mean something? Is that significant? Should we check Probably that out? Probably one symptom won't do it. No. That's why this helps. Which is why you need you to can get You can give them uh, three or four symptoms and then, or signs. Yeah. Signs are what you see. Symptoms are what you tell somebody. But so signs of what you have and show it to him or her yeah. and say, do I have blank? If they don't recognize it right away. Right. Because they're thinking about other things too. So, and, and the reason that we are doing this consistently always is that we want you to be informed consumers and active participants in your own health care. 
So we're going to continue this conversation with some discussions about other symptoms that appear as a result of deficiencies in other hormone groups. Uh, so stay with us, come back, and as always, thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.